Today's synth exploration is sponsored by DistroKid, so if you want to release your music onto Spotify, iTunes and other great stores, use DistroKid and my link in the description for a discount. DistroKid costs $20 a year and with that you can upload unlimited amounts of music to all the stores. In my hands I have what could pass for small handheld gaming devices, but they're not. These are actually small digital synthesizers. This here is Fireball, an 8-voice wavetable synthesizer. And this is Lemon Drop, a 4-voice granular synthesizer. These two synths here were sent over to me by 1010 Music. They also make the black box and the blue box that you might have seen. And in today's video I'm gonna compare these two synthesizers so that you can make an informed decision on which one is right for you, or maybe none of them are. So let's start off by comparing the sound, because even though they look identical, they don't sound identical. So what is the difference that we're actually hearing? Well, the Fireball is a wavetable synthesizer. A wavetable is made up out of multiple single cycle waveforms, and you combine them together to create a complex waveform. Now the Lemon Drop instead uses samples, so you can load whatever samples you want into it, and it uses the first 30 seconds of that sample. You then create smaller parts of that samples, grains, that you can manipulate. So here are some more sound demos, so you can compare which one fits you the best. And after that we'll make some patches from scratch, so you get a feel for the difference in workflow, because while these synths look similar, they're very different to program. Next up let's take a look at the oscillators, because that's where the lemon drop and the fireball are quite different. You start by pressing the wavetable here and you can see a representation of it, and if we play it, sounds kind of boring, which wavetables usually do before you start adding modulations and effects on them. But this synth is not groundbreaking in terms of being a wavetable synthesizer, you can select the wavetable here from a list. You can also import your own. There's a couple of wavetables here. I would have liked to see more, but there's enough here to get you going. So you just select something from the list. And then we have the position. And that's how you make wavetable synthesis come alive. You modulate the position within the wavetable. So by pressing right, we can add an LFO here. 
Now we're in the second wavetable. And here I've selected a wavetable called Furry Primes. So let's increase the volume. And let's modulate the second wavetable's position using LFO number two. So second LFO set to sine, not that fast. And we have some movement to the sound. And now we can introduce the third oscillator. This oscillator is the same for both the units, both the fireball and the lemon drop. So here you can choose from saw, triangle, square, sine, noise. And the square can be pulse width modulated. So let's set up a little LFO for this as well. And let's make the second oscillator one octave above and control the level using an envelope. So we go in here, set envelope two. So it will be controlling the level of the second wavetable. We select envelope, envelope number two, increase the attack. So we've got some sparkly wave table magic just kind of creeping into the sound. Let's tune down the third oscillator so we get it playing one octave below and we go back and we check here. So wave table one is slightly detuned as well. Of course, we haven't touched the filter, but yeah, just to recap, we have the two wavetables, we have an additional oscillator, so three oscillators, but there's not a whole lot you can do with them. There's just different wavetables, you can change the position. That's about it. It's it's a wavetable synthesizer. And if you compare it to something like the Argon 8, for example, it offers a little bit more in terms of the wave mods that you can apply on the wavetables. And there's also some cross-modulation options on the Argon 8, which this synth doesn't have, just to keep that in mind, that this is a nice sounding, but a little bit more basic wavetable synthesizer. As of this recording, you know, they might be able to add features further down the road. Next up, let's add a filter. And we have some LFO here controlling the cutoff and some envelope to, to resonance. And let's dial in that reverb and it will start sounding pretty nice. Now this is a sound that you either really like or you'd really dislike, or you can see the utility of it within the context of a mix. You can also turn on the unison mode. So this is what it sounds like without. Let's quickly change the envelope and let's go into the effects and let's select a chorus and we have something more snappy. From here, you could, for example, set up this X and Y pad and these two knobs, these are like macro knobs, so you can set it up to control various things. But I think you get the idea of how this unit sounds. Next up, let's take a look at the lemon drop because it's, it's quite different and I actually prefer it because it's more unique and more interesting. So the lemon drop is a granular synthesizer and it has quite a different sound compared to the little fireball. So this preset that I made myself is based on two samples. So if we go into the oscillator here, you can see that the first sample is a polysynth sample. So it's basically a synth sample. The second oscillator is just some noise, like a noise loop. And the third oscillator, which is the same as on the fireball, is set to square with some pulse width. And since you can load pretty much any sample and use that as the foundation for a synthy sound, you can make stuff like this. So 
so this sound here is made up out of a piano sound and an electric piano sound and a bit of, uh, I think it's a sine wave maybe? Yeah, a sine wave. And if we take a look here at the graphical representation, when I hit the note, the first sample is just, the position is just moving through it, and the second sample, you can see how it jumps around. And we're gonna take a little look at what's going on here under the hood and some of the settings that you can use. But it basically lets you create these kind of vibrant, weird, esoteric sounds. Let's start by loading a sample and you can very easily load your own samples by just dragging and dropping them onto the SD card. I think they take the first 30 seconds of whatever sample you have on the SD card and uses that as an oscillator. And we can see here I've loaded a few. So let's take this polysynth sound here. So here we have a bunch of different parameters. We can beat sync the grain selection so we can set the tempo for the entire unit and then beat sync it. We have density, and if beat sync is off, density determines the amount of grains that are played per second. So as you can see here, when I increase it, we get a graphical representation of the grains. Then we have grain size. How large are the grains? So you can see how small they are. Then we have a window. And when it's at 0%, the grains are always selected at the same spot. And when we increase it, we're also increasing the window, so to speak, of where a grain can be selected. With just a splash of reverb, we have some magic happening already. Next up we have jitter, which is basically like a chaos parameter. At 0% there's no deviation when selecting the grains, and the more you increase it, the more randomness and chaos you introduce. So you can hear how it became much more unpredictable when we increased the jitter. Next up we have random panning here, which I think is really nice. Gives us a nice stereo sound. The next parameter is play mode. You can have it fixed, which is suitable for this kind of sound. So wherever the play position is set to, that's where we're starting in the sample. And you can, of course, modulate the play position. This is a little bit like on the fireball, where you could set the position of the wavetable. But here you're setting the position in a longer sample. You can also set it to moving, which moves the playhead through the sample at various speeds, depending on your speed setting. You also loop the sample, so either forward or bi-directional, so it you know, goes to the end and then back again. We can also preserve the attack of the sound. It's a little technical for me. I think what it does, it scans like the first, the first attack of the actual sample, and it preserves that attack value regardless of where you end up in the sample where you set your start position, but don't take my word for it. It's a little bit too technical for me. The next setting is pattern, which lets us add an octave above or a fifth. We can also detune the sound and we have live input, which I will touch on later in the video. Now let's introduce a second sample. So we just press here, go to grain number two. So add the Disla flute sound on top. And what I like to do is just go through a few of the parameters while playing, turning the knob, changing the value, and seeing if something fun happens when you modulate it. 
So I'm just doing it manually, and if I find some fun interaction, like this, for example, I might use it. So we can set telephone number two to control the density. And suddenly we have this moving, vibrant sound. The filters are the same on both units, so let's add some filter and let's add some chorus, I think, just to top this sound off. And I think you can see why I think that the lemon drop is a really interesting synthesizer. Now, next up, let's take a look at that input. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Here's five reasons to try out DistroKid. Firstly, you sign up for about $20 a year and you can upload unlimited amounts of music. Secondly, it's really quick and easy to upload. Basically, anyone can do it without any prior knowledge. Three, there are different tiers of subscriptions. So if you want to release your music under, say, different artist names, or if you're starting a label, DistroKid has an option for you. Four, DistroKid lets you upload to relevant stores and streaming services, such as Spotify and iTunes, and it doesn't take long for the music to be available in the stores. Five, there's also also the hyperfollow feature which automatically creates a custom page where people can find out where to buy or listen to your music and I personally really like this feature. So go and check out DistroKid using my link in the description, you get a little discount and you support the channel. Another thing that you can do with these two synthesizers is using them as effects units. So there's a stereo input and for the fireball you can take incoming audio through its effects. But what sets them apart is that the nano box can actually be used as sort of a grain sampler, grain effects unit and take incoming audio and process it through its grain oscillator. So here I'm processing a loop through the grain synthesizer, I have beat sync on and I'm controlling the window using an LFO and I'm controlling the live position so I can actually jump back and forth in time and you can hear it in this little demo here. And I'm also processing the external audio through the filters as well as the effects, so the chorus and the reverb. And here I'm taking just one drone sound from the Machina into the lemon drop. Let's add some reverb. Let's add some chorus. And let's go into the granular engine and see what we can do. Next up, I want to talk about what is actually similar between the devices and one obvious similarity is that they're physically identical. So we have the same knobs and buttons. We also have the same inputs and outputs. And the UI and the functions are very similar except for the obvious difference in Synth Engine. So if we take a look here, this is the home button here. If we press it once, we get this XY little pad here. So the screen is a touch interface. You can also use these knobs here to scroll through a menu. And what we see here are representations of the two main oscillators and we can press it to quickly access that page. And there's often different pages and those are indicated by these dots over here. So you can just cycle through the different pages using this button here. Now in terms of similarities, both of these devices have two filters each. They can be parallel or they can be in series. 
There's also different filter types, so high pass, low pass, band pass and notch. And you can use your finger to set the cutoff and it's pretty responsive. If we press this button here, we access filter number two and it has the same filter types. Now here is something really important. If we go to cutoff, you can see these three dots. They indicate that this parameter can be controlled by something. To access this, you press this little arrow button here and here we have three sources. So we could go to say source number three here and select whatever we want from the list. So you could have none. We have envelope one and two, LFO one and two, sequencer, velocity, pressure, key, mod wheel, X and Y. X and Y also corresponds to these macro knobs. And if you want to learn a CC value, you press learn and turn a knob here and it learns the CC value of the knob that you turned. It's very simple. So that's how you set up a modulation. Then we also have envelopes. So there's two envelopes per unit, one and two. And you can see here, attack, decay, and release are modulatable. So you could, for example, go into the attack phase here of the envelope and set it to the LFO. So the LFO could modulate the attack, for example. And then there's the LFOs. There's two LFOs per unit. So we have different waveforms, saw, rev saw, triangle, positive triangle, sine, positive sine, square, positive square and random. And then we have the sequencer. So it looks like this. So basically it's a step sequencer that you can use to modulate something, anything that's modulatable basically. And there's a secondary page on both devices that lets you set the step length here. Number of steps from two up to, I think it's 32. And then we have key trig. So basically it triggers with the key. So it resets if you press a new key. And in terms of effects, it's the same on both devices. So you have two effects engines. So effects engine number one here can be a flanger plus distortion, chorus or phaser. And if we press again, effects two can be delay or reverb. And this is the same for both devices. So last in this video, let me give you some of my opinions on these two synths. So first and foremost, I've had a lot of fun with the Lemon Drop, and I think that shows, has a very unique sound. And there's not a lot of granular synthesizers out there to choose from. The GR1 comes to mind, it's an alternative, it's a little bit more expensive, whereas the Fireball has more competition because there are quite a few wavetable synths out there. Which brings me to the price. I think it's priced around $400, and at that price point, there is a lot of competition out there. And 400 bucks might seem like a lot for such a small synthesizer, but you also have to compare the specs. So this is sort of equivalent to an Argon 8, for example. So it's eight voices, which is the same as the Argon 8, but then of course, the module version is closer in price, and I would actually recommend the module version over the Fireball. But then if we look at the Lemon Drop, there's not that many granular synthesizers out there, so 400 bucks for it seems pretty okay to me given the competition. But then of course it's all up to you whether or not you think a small synthesizer is worth this kind of money or not. And another negative that I want to bring up is the touch screen. It's not used for that many things. It's used for this X and Y pad that I've showed you. It's used to control, say, the filter. But oftentimes I end up using the knobs anyway. So it feels like an interesting technical solution that is a little underutilized. You use it for typing in the name of a preset, for example, which is super nice compared to just dialing it in on other synths. But other than that, it's a little bit underutilized and could be used more. So maybe that's something for a future update. And speaking about future updates, here are some improvements that I'd like to see in future updates to these synthesizers. Number one, especially on the Fireball, I'd like to see oscillator being a source, so you can use that to modulate something else in the synthesizer. So for example, cross-modulating between the oscillators. So that'd be nice. Number two, I'd like to see more wavetables on the Fireball. I don't think there's enough currently. There's a couple, but there could be more. So that's something that could be improved upon. Number three, more samples on the Lemon Drop. Sure, you could add your own, but it would be nice with a larger curated set of samples. It would also bring the synthesizers more in line with the competition. 
and turn things off. While it's not something that could be added in a firmware update, I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity not to have them battery powered because it's just a lot of fun sitting and, and tweaking them. They're actually the perfect size to just hold in your hand and creating Simpsons sound and it's just a lot of fun. I actually took this with me on the bus, true story, took it with me on the bus, I powered it using a power bank and just sat there making sounds and having it almost like a meditative device because the lemon drop can create these beautiful soundscapes but there's no internal battery and I think that's a little bit of a missed opportunity. So which one is right for you? Let me know down in the comments or maybe none of them. Let me know, let us know and as always have a great day and talk to you later.